just put it in my bracket. <laughs> I'm going to play a song. I was told to play a specific song to get out of the way, if that's all right. Um... Maybe. So just take a deep breath. That you're walking up there, huh? We introduce ourselves. Our name is Aronda. Very good to see you, dearest. Those divine beings of light. Look at you. Your light is so bright, we need sunglasses right here. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, your beings of light. You see, you are the shifters of the universe. There's a lot of shifting that is happening here, and you are the ones that are connecting the dots, yes? And as you connect the dots, you are connecting your own dots, and you're moving those dots, and when you move those dots, and those dots are going in another direction, then that energy is what is being activated. <sighs> we see the energy back there, too, huh? Very good to see you. You see, dearest beings of light, you are... Who you are, because you are here, you raised your hand, you volunteered. Oh. Technology, huh? We don't have to turn our back. <laughs> you know where they go, yes? This is not the secret. This is the sacred totas. <laughs> yes? Some of you have, well, many of you have sacred totas too. You see, it is that energy of the human body that just shifted everything. When that energy of the human body came in and then the, the uh, Romans got a hold of it and the Italians got a hold of it and said, oh, there's so much pleasure there. And there's so much joy there in that little human body. It must be bad. And that is how they could control people, you know, is to take their pleasure away. Take their joy away. We hope we don't offend anyone, but hoo hoo, we may. <laughs> <laughs> because you see, with that energy, on this day, 
in the Christian faith of Good Friday, it is no accident that we are here. It is a Good Friday, yes? yes. As what did Ray say? Every Friday is a Good Friday. Every Thursday, every Monday, every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Saturday. It is all good. It is what you make it. How many of you have a favorite day? Hello? <laughs> it's early. Did we put you to sleep? <laughs> yes, you have a favorite day. But you know, if you make all of your days favorite, with that energy, many things will shift. You get the opportunity to awaken every morning and decide, I'm going to be happy today. And even if things seem just a bit sucky. <laughs> Can we say that? Too late, huh? <laughs> if things seem a bit difficult for the contrast, you still... It is your choice. You see, before 2012, you know, you created everything. You create all that's in your world. You create everything, everything, everything. Now, you create the experience of everything. It is a bit different. Are you aware of that? Yes, this is new information that is coming in. Your experience, in other words, the world is going to go on. Yes, you are the movie star of your own world. You are, and everyone in your movie is the supporting player. That is true, but you're creating the experience in what you do with that experience. And you are 100% responsible for that experience. And with that energy, when you are 100% responsible for your experience, you might ask yourself, well, well, why am I experiencing this in such a negative way? Yes? Why are things happening that don't seem like so much fun? Yes? How can you take something that seems to be very bad and turn it into a positive experience. Do you know? Hello? Are you there? Find a purpose. Ah, who said that? Find a purpose. Find a purpose. See what it is that you are having, creating, using this experience about. What it is that you are experiencing and what you get to learn from that and what you're going to do with that. Because you know, it is an issue that is causing all of this energy. You know this, yes? And that issue is not really what is happening at all. So you get to find the purpose or find the energy. Now granted, sometimes a pickle is just a pickle. It's just something that you get the opportunity to experience. Yes? You are talking too fast for you. <laughs> so with that energy, and you find the purpose or the reason behind the situation, then you can shift it. And you get to forgive everything of everyone and everything and every situation and blah, blah, blah. You all know that, yes? But do you know how? We're going to give you a little tip. So sometimes it is difficult to forgive yourself. But we learned a long time ago that it comes with willingness. I am willing to forgive this situation, the former husband, the former spouse, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the friend, the parent, the father, the mother, the aunt, the uncle, the stranger, yourself. I am willing. And when you repeat that a thousand times a day maybe, then it causes a shift in your cellular field. It causes a shift in your energy. And one day you wake up and say, I am free. I am unlimited. And in that energy, just those three words, I am willing to forgive, that's five words, and then fill in the blank. That shifts the entire world in that capacity. You know your field is bigger than just your body, yes? 
You've heard lots and lots of speakers tell you about the field and you've listened to cryons talk and talking about the cellular field and when your field bumps into someone else's field then that is going to come into play, yes. And it is always nice to bump into someone's field that's nice and happy and joyful but sometimes your field bumps into someone's field that they don't feel like that. And you have a choice then as to either allow their energy to entrain to yours or your energy to entrain to theirs. So first you have to decide. We know each of you decide that every single day, yes? Hello? So understand that as you are making that decision, sometimes you get to go and do things that you did not think you ever should, like some day job. And you think, what in the world is this about? I met some male and said, why do I have to sell hotel rooms in Branson, Missouri for seven years? Well, Branson, Missouri could use a little extra light, eh? <laughs> so she spent her time there, seven year cycle. Some of you get that opportunity to share your energy in a different way in the world because that is what you volunteered for. That is what, where your energy is needed. Yes? So what are you doing when your energy is needed somewhere? Are you arguing with it like the vessel Maryland did for 10 years and said, no, no, I don't think I can do that? Or are you saying yes? We ask you to just say yes. We do many, many things on this planet. You are doing many things on this planet as well. So it is time to just say yes to your next step. It is time to just say yes because it will be fun. Because you are fun. You understand what we say? In that energy of creating your experience of this world and seeing how you are acknowledging all aspects of this world, you get the opportunity to be present. And we don't know that everyone knows what that means. What does it mean to be present? How can you plan an event that like our vessel Merlin is planning her visionaries in light convergence in the balloon fiesta in Santa Fe, New Mexico? How can she plan it now and still be present with where she is? Do you know what she does? She takes a deep breath and goes into meditation and transforms her energy to be in October to see what is needed there. Have you done that? Where would you like to go? Do you know that the times that we are living in right now well there is no time at all. You have the capability right here, right now, that if you wish to see something that is happening in the future or the past, all you have to do is ask. Did you know that? You know, how many of you teach how to get into the Akashic Records? Anybody here is an Akashic Records teacher? You're not going to raise your hand, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Because you see, you don't have to learn to get into the Akashic Records any longer. You just have to do it. You just have to go... Is there anybody here that does not know what the Akashic Records are? The Akashic Records are the record keeper for all aspects of your life. Your lives. Every event, every situation, every conversation, every experience that you have ever had since the inception of your soul, no matter how many thousands of years ago, it's all recorded in your field. So sometimes those experiences in your past, as you know, are controlling the decisions that you're making now. Yes? And sometimes the decisions that, uh, that, that you made or happened in the future are actually controlling the decisions that you make now.
You see now, uh, this old Marilyn was teaching her class on the acoustic record. She teaches, it's like a little tiny thing that says everybody's going in. <laughs> on your mark, it said go. <laughs> it's not a big deal. And, and someone raised their hand and said, yes, but the acoustic records only goes to the past. Which is not true. She didn't read that book. <laughs> and you can't go into other planets with the acoustic records. She didn't read that book either, did she? <laughs> no, she did not. No. So you can go anywhere, and all of that is all in the energy. So if you wish to say, so you don't, you're looking for work, or plerk, as we like to call it, play plus work equals plerk. <laughs> if you're looking for plerk, go into the energy of what you are choosing. Go into the energy of what you are willing to create. Yes? And see the situation. You may even see the logo. You may even see the words of the place that you are to work with, plurk with. But you, might, you can't get your ego involved. You know how to tell the difference between your ego and your imagination and your intuition and your higher self? Would you like to know? In our how to channel class, we, we do that as we have your ego speak to you. So you can actually identify where that ego is vibrating in your body. Yes, the ego is not a part of your body. It is separate, coming to you to help you learn maybe boundaries. So. If you can identify where it is speaking to you. For a vessel Maryland it comes from here and here. And then you can turn to it and say thank you. Thank you little ego for trying to keep me safe. Thank you for, for doing your job and, and making things much bigger than they are or making things much scarier than they are or m making things look like little frogs or whatever. <laughs> Now, be quiet. Just be quiet. I've got this one. Your imagination, you know, you're wonderful creators. Your imagination, you can imagine something and imagine the wind in your face and the, the hair blowing around and your clothes blowing around. And then when you identify where that energy is vibrating in your body, you can then identify the difference between your imagination and your ego and your intuition. Because your intuition is from a completely different place. We know that you've had lots and lots of teachers come here to teach you about your intuition, yes? So, did they ever ask you to let your intuition vibrate so you can identify it? See, we're teaching you new things. <laughs> We love that part. <laughs> so as you are catching yourself in intuitive moments, ask yourself, well, what, where is that resonating? Where am I feeling that in my body? Am I feeling it back here? Am I feeling it in my sacred tatas? Am I feeling it in my ears? A vessel melon is right there. Her intuition comes from a very specific point, and she has learned to listen to it most of the time. <laughs> but it was a very tough lesson when she first decided that she, that was what it was. One time she was going to Atlanta to speak with Dr. Todd over Kytus, and her intuition kept telling her, check the clothes in the dryer, check the clothes in the dryer. She was in a hurry. I don't need to, the sheets are in the dryer, blah, blah, blah. The sheets are in the dryer. You don't have to do that. I've got to go. I've got to get on the plane. Well, she got there. You see how she dresses. She didn't have any of these things. <laughs> she just had these things. <laughs> So she had to, she wore little t-shirts that she was wearing on the plane, yes, with her beautiful vests. <laughs> Listen to that intuition. <laughs> Identify where it vibrates. We want you to go home this week 
and catch yourself in intuitive moments and ask where do you feel that everybody feels it differently yes or if you know yes many of you in the third eye yes that's the most obvious back here who knows what that's about <laughs> So, and you can ask your ego to speak to you too. And let them get going really good. You know, telling you all kinds of stories. You know, the ego likes to keep things all worked up, yes? And then, when you can identify where that vibration is coming from, that is when you say, okay, now you can be quiet. Because you are in charge, you are in control. You are the one that is setting your boundaries, yes? So understand, there are all sorts of things you get to learn. And everything has changed since 2012, yes? If you're frustrated about you can't hear, you can't sense, you can't feel any longer, and you don't know what happened, how many of you feel that way, huh? Uh, so it is because you're trying to, it could be, because you're trying to do it the same way that you did it before 2012. So ask yourself, have you shifted the way you connect? You understand what we say? And we know that connecting is very important because the source of all that is is guiding you. They never let you go. They never step away. Whatever you call that energy, they are in every cell of your body, every cell of your field, every cell of everything. You understand what we say? Question. You have question about anything. We've got a microphone. You can just raise your hand. We don't have a subject. <laughs> yes, sir. This Well, understand that as long as you are saying you can't pick up on what it is, that is your purchase order to the universe. Instead, saying, I'm understanding that this little bird has a message for me. Yes, I am understanding this little bird has a message for me. And my logical brain may not be able to understand it, but this little bird is going to guide me. And my heart, my soul, my being will understand the messages of this bird. And is it a physical bird or is it a non-physical bird? It's a physical bird and he sits in and talks to me every day. We talk to each other. Um, and he came in just before my grandson came in. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, it was, it was really a... It was a heart-wrenching... It was, it was just a really wild time in my life. My daughter was incarcerated with him at seven and a half months on Valentine's Day as I was finishing my master's degree. So understand that the experience that you were creating, the experience of that situation was difficult. So now the bird is reminding you to replace the joy in your life or to place the joy back into your life with your grandchild. Yes, that's easy to do. Yes, and understand that when you have a messenger, like a bird, a bird you can see what kind of bird and you can breathe with that bird's wings. You know, you can do that, yes? A bird breathes opposite that humans do. Um, a human would automatically breathe in on up the flapping of the wings and breathe out on the down, yes? A bird actually does opposite. A bird breathes out on down and up. Well, we can't even talk about that. You know what we're talking about. So understand that connect, if you, if you wish to listen to that bird, and how many of you have a totem animal or something that just keeps showing up in your world? 
A, a bird, exactly. A bird is about soaring. A bird is about moving the energy. A bird is about shifting the consciousness and learning to sing your song of joy once again. And your soul can recognize the sound. Does that help, eh? That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Next question. There was one, one up here and there's one up back there. Hi, good evening. Um, I wonder if Anna Rana could speak about the current political situation um, and what we as individuals can do when we can't avoid like, seeing this information on the news. Mm, don't watch the news. <laughs> um, I understand that, but, some, but is there anything that we can do about the energy that's out there? Yes, yes. We have listened to our dear friend Lee Carroll talk many times about numerology. And he does the numerology of Cryon. We've done the numerology of Adronda ourselves. And we've done the numerology of Donald Trump. We do not want to get politically involved, you understand. However, you think what kind of circus is going on here? And it just appears to be getting worse and worse. So the first thing you know, Donald Trump's numerology is a three, which is change. He is eliciting change because everything that is not in integrity is going to implode upon itself. And he is a part of that change. And as we take a deep breath <laughs> and think, oh my, how much more change can there possibly be? And what can we do as light plurkers? You remember play plus work equals plurk. Light plurkers. It will be in the dictionary one day, we are sure. <laughs> to assist that this shift of this planet, this is why we came here is to assist with this shift. So what we ask each of you to do, and we have asked thousands of people across the planet, you meditate, yes? Every day when you meditate, we wish for you to place the planet in between your hands and run the energy of love back and forth. We ask you to you don't have to put the real planet because your hands are not quite that big. However, you can put a fact is fact. Your energy, however, is bigger than the planet. If you need a physical globe or something, fine. So that is one thing we ask you to do. Another thing we ask you to do is to not be a part of the problem. So when everyone else in the world is complaining about how everything is going wrong and oh, did you see the news that you did this and shot this person and the poor guy just had a cell phone and then there was this big trauma and everybody happened there and obviously that is not an integrity. And it must be important because the bells are ringing again. The vessel Merlin's phone is on silent, it's coming through the speaker here. <laughs> so turn the phone off and know that this time is for you, or take a message for us. Huh? Understand, that is what these bracelets are for. This is, every time you have this negative, or someone around you has the negative thought about the planet, negative thought about anything, because that negativity builds upon itself, we ask you to change your bracelet and put it on the other wrist. You can use any bracelet, but there are so many people that were asking for them, we started selling them. So, when you have a negative thought about, oh, what is going on in the news, what is happening there, change your bracelet. You understand what we say? So that is becoming a part of the solution. When you are around people that are indeed telling you that you're wrong because the politics that are happening now are really beautiful and wonderful and sweet, stop. And instead of defending your belief, 
just send them love because lots of good things have happened in the past few months yes what is that me first movement huge huge other good things are happening because those things that are not in integrity are coming to the surface to be dealt with yes and when they're coming to the surface to be dealt with sometimes they've got to implode first you did not know or maybe humans did not have the capability of understanding that the laws need to be changed how can they be changed how can one person make a difference one person is a domino and one google the video uh, metronomes by Joe Dispenza you've seen that yes there's metronomes 32 of them on a video and this is how the field works that is why it is so important that you acknowledge the positivity that is within you no matter what things appear to be that is just the contrast so and the metronomes there's 32 of them and they're all started you know what the metronome is it says thing that works is not electrical it works on the on the uh, magnetics of the earth and they're all starting at different points yes and as they're starting at different points in 2 minutes and 47 seconds they're all going the same so here is an inanimate object that is feeling the field of the others that are around it so that is why we say every single day find the joy find the happiness look when you look at the news send it love because the news is not what you think that it is it is not speaking the truth so that is why we say you know ask that the universe bring you the information that is yours to know if you feel the need to communicate with your congressman or your senator or your president if you email it will not be found if you text it will not be allowed in however if you hand write a letter with a handwritten address every day every week for a long time eventually someone is going to read it and that will make the difference do you know that you can do that yes you can it does make the difference but it is uh, takes an effort on your part know that this planet is not meant for disaster Take a deep breath. Know that this planet is not meant for disaster. Take another deep breath. How did that feel, huh? You see, this planet is meant for evolution. That is why there are more channelers now than ever before that is why there are more messengers sent from source than ever before that is why the energy of love is getting stronger and stronger so when you feel that overwhelming feeling that somehow seems to overcome your joyous thoughts Stop. Ask yourself what this is really about. Fear of the future? <laughs> Take that backpack of frogs off your back. 
and free them, let them go. If you fear something, it is coming nearer you. You know this. That is not new. So instead, hold the positive. And with that positive, you can be the difference. And what can you do? What are you doing to make your planet a better place? Are you helping the children of the world that are uh, being diagnosed with things and then drugged over? Are you helping the, the planet with recycling? Are you, are you being a volunteer as an advocate? Are you, what are you doing to be the difference? What are you shifting? What are you experiencing for your difference? You understand what we say? And then say yes to that. Because you see, so many people think, well, I am just one person. What could I do? And then answer that question. What could I do to be the difference? For you see, we know that you are choosing to be the difference that you wish to see in the world. We know that you don't want to complain about the world. We know this. And they're applauding for that thought. <laughs> Timing is wonderful, isn't it? So ask yourself, how could it get any better than this? And then say yes to what comes to mind. Does that help, dearest? We are celebrating that. <laughs> Next question. There was a question up here. Yes. Thank you. It is my honor. Could you please explain what occurred in 2012? the shift that makes it now available for us to, for example, connect to the Akashic Records without going through the entire process. Well, there, everyone's got an opinion about that, you know. Opinions are like noses. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got one. It is our opinion which may not have a thing to do with your truth or reality. <coughs> It is our opinion that the Mayan calendar did not end in 2012. They just needed to get a new calendar. And they knew that that cycle was complete. And so everything as you knew it on that time shifted with the energy manifestation shifted. You used to have to write everything out and put it in your manifestation corner and hold your hand up in the air and go out at sunset and put your foot up in the air and light the candle and build the incense and go woo 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 in a certain way and now all you have to do is oh, I love to think about this. I, I want to see Christiella again and there she is. That is one of the shifts. Everything connected, it is like the pathways of the universe were turning and they locked into place and it is our opinion that we shifted into the fifth dimension at that time. Now there are lots of people that don't believe that but explain it some other way. The fifth dimension is a place where you can think of something and there they will show up. The fifth dimension is a way that you can, uh, the Vessel Mel and the, her first e e energy was a, when a black panther showed up in her living room. It was not a live panther, but it was not there before and then it was. Uh, and it is big, it is not a small, uh, it's another story. <laughs> it's on the recording somewhere, we're sure. But understand that in 2012, 
the frequency of the planet transformed. One of the ways that it worked was with the Lemurian choir because they sang the songs that had never been sung on this planet for 27,000 years and that shifted the consciousness at the gateway to Lemuria in, in Hawaii. So that is one of the things. We're in the fifth dimension. Take a deep breath. You feel the chills, huh? Oh. Yes. You see, that is confirmation. Uh, Another aspect is the veils between all of the dimensions got thinner in 2012. So you can actually lose things into another dimensional realm. You know, you put your keys down right there and then you came back and they are not there any longer. Yes? Yes, exactly. When you feel them in your emotional body and feel what it feels like to look and find those keys. That is, the, the emotional body of humans, are, and most of you are part human anyway, <laughs> the, the emotional body is the through line that transcends all of the dimensional realms. Are you aware of that? And so you can feel it in your emotional body and bring it back into this dimension. And so that is another thing that happened. In the fifth dimension, we believe that we are moving into that point of instant manifestation. Now that does not mean that you're going to hold your hand out and say, okay, I'm going to have an ice cream cone right here. Okay, or make a hot food sundae, make it a hot food sundae right here and have it appear. It is not that, that would be the 13th or 14th dimension. But what would happen is, oh, what a hot fun Sunday, I really do. And then someone's going to come along and say, you know, I got this two for one thing at, down here at the Dairy Queen, would you like to come along with me? That is fifth dimensional living. Does that answer your question? Yes, and it brings up another one about the implication of instantaneous healing. Mm -hmm. The implication, <laughs> did you hear how she asked that question? <laughs> Is instantaneous healing possible? Yes, it is. Our vessel Melon and us are developed a whole course on holographic healing that carries through that and certifies people to instantaneously heal people. But you are not the healer. The person who is doing the healing, not facilitating the healing. And yes, it is possible. Everything is energy, yes? Intention is everything. That is fifth dimensional. Intention is everything. So it is our intention that everyone will buy all of these bottles so we don't have to carry them home. <laughs> it is our intention that you will receive the healing and the information exactly in a way that you can understand it. So the universe just says yes to that intention. That is instantaneous healing. We have seen miraculous results. Miraculous. People that were going to have back surgery because all their discs were smashed and flat. People that could not see because they had macular degeneration. Now they're driving. People that had tumors in their ovaries or their female organs and then they were gone. So why is it that this person that has this tumor disintegrate and this person that has this tumor does not. Take a deep breath. Isn't that the question? It is a choice. Why would a person choose not to heal? Think of all of the good that comes to the energy with people that are coming in together to help this person heal. When you have a disaster and, and floods drown a community, <coughs> humans send love and healing and help and assistance. We just wish that they would do that without the disaster. So you see Healing is the same way. However, you get to be very strong in your intention. You get to be very knowing that your intention is correct. 
We know of several people who have come back from stage four cancer of one or the other, but they had to eliminate all of the negative influences in their life, which meant they had to call up all of their friends and say, you can't call me anymore. <laughs> or they had to eliminate, they had to leave the home that they were in because there were negative people there that were coming in saying, oh, we've got this story or that story, and she couldn't listen to it. So that is the key, to know that if it is in your highest good, in your divine order, to have instantaneous healing, then it will be so. Why does it take sometimes more than one session for healing? You know, because we know with holographic healing, sometimes it takes one session and sometimes it takes twelve. But to know that you, as the healer, the recipient, is every bit a part of that process as the facilitator, if not more so. That you get to operate in the emotional body, the physical body, the mental body, and the spiritual body, and the soul star body, and the earth body as well. And then go all through the theta levels and all through all those bodies. And they all get the opportunity to be aligned. And then the healing can occur. And sometimes it happens quicker than others. Does that help, dearest? Yes, thank you. Yes. Let's have another question. Uh, how about this right over here? Right here? And then there was another one over here? Yes. My question is... Um, I left the job because I had to in December, well, January. Started a new job in February. I'm a little confused about what you were talking about, the play and work part, but the, I had to tell if it's my ego or if it's my intuition. I've been sitting here trying to think this because it's a wonderful job. There's a bunch of great things about it, but I seem to find everything wrong with it. That is a habit, dearest. Can you catch? <laughs> How's that? You're a better catch than she, huh? <laughs> but you see, that is a habit that you, you are trained from the time you were very small to find something wrong and it probably happened to you. That this, it can't possibly be good because this and this and this and this and this. So every single time now you catch yourself thinking about what is wrong, we want you to change your bracelet to the other wrist. And you may change it 150 times in an hour. You understand? Especially at first, and we want you to eventually wear it on the same wrist for 21 days. So that means that you haven't complained about your work. Because when you complain about something, what happens? You get more of that. It is like a purchase order to the universe. When you have a parent disorder to the universe and you're saying, well, this is wrong, this is bad, this is... And your brain is saying, but it's really good, I really like it. But, but the habit... We have a program called 21 Days to Freedom from Addiction and Habit. Uh, it is on our website. But it takes actually 42 days to change a habit or more. Uh, Vessel Marilyn wore her bracelet for 120 days before she finally got it. <laughs> you understand? And she still wears it. You understand what we say? But it's the habit, it's not what is reality. Does that answer your question? Yes. There's one over here. You can just pass it over. So, to follow up on the uh, talk about healing. Yes. I've been here before. Um, I had surgery eight months ago, and I had an energy session the night before. And there was definitely some things, some things there during that session. But when I woke up from surgery, and the following weeks, it was increased sensitivity, intuition, repetitive numbers, and very vivid images during meditation. So can you talk a little bit about that and then how surgery kind of maybe launches those experiences? 
Well, the surgery may have launched it, but what we are finding, <laughs> and our vessel Marilyn says, you need to be very careful here because this is going to be posted on the website. <laughs> How many of you are doctors? <laughs> she raised her hand. <laughs> what we are finding is in surgery, especially when you have energy work beforehand, during and after, while your, your body is getting an upgrade. Now, you don't all want to run out and have surgery, but that is one way that your body can get an upgrade. And maybe that was the only way possible because you were a little stubborn somewhere else or you thought it ought to be a certain way if I'm going to get an upgrade I'm going to do this program and I took that class and I did that and I did that and I did that so I must be getting the upgrade and it was still the same so they said well, we're going to give her an upgrade but we've got to get her consciousness out of the way <laughs> we believe that you can upgrade your software with intention that is what we do during our how to channel class and what we do during our uh, accelerating your quantum spirit, your quantum energy, as we upgrade the software in your brain. And we believe that is what can happen during surgery. Obviously, it happened to you. It is also possible that you had a walk-in during the surgery. So we ask you, did you? Did you come into the surgery one person and leave another? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. I know that everything is brighter and I'm more aware and I'm experiencing more. That in is that physical sense. So I don't know if that's a walk in. It could be a, I just opened up. It could be a composite as well. What well you're higher you're higher that is what is happening more often now because it does not require the integration period of a walk in. A composite is where your higher self comes in to join your regular self. Mm -hmm. And so you have this awakening, everything is a bit more sensitive and you are moving in a spiritual direction and usually a composite still has the same burning desire to make a difference, okay. to be the difference. Does that make sense yes. to you? Yes. So it is too bad that you had to have the surgery to just get that upgrade. <laughs> but it actually has a benefit. I'm in a better Yes. You see, when you ask for something, the universe will provide it any way they can. They will do whatever it takes to get that action. Yay! <laughs> Sometimes it is a little difficult, yes? Sometimes the, the pain is so intense that you think, what in the world am I doing here? And then you come away from it. And you think, oh, I do know that. So, instead, next time ask if it all happens with ease and grace and love and compassion and lots of play and joy, if it is possible. If it is not possible, then show me why not. Does that help? Yes. There's a question. No, no men ask questions. Have you noticed that? <laughs> this one right here. Hi, I have a question about the 17th dimension. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what it looks like? Is it in this universe? Is it part of other universes, just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, and it is interesting that you would ask, because you've probably been there. The seventeenth dimension that we know of <coughs> is where we are from. It is a, a part of a blue planet series that is another galaxy. It is another dimensional realm in the 144, 152 dimensions that are here. The vegetation in that area is all shades of blue. The trees are a very rubbery. 
The building structures are low to the ground and have no walls, but they are still solid. But you may or may not see them. The beings that are from as us, Aronda, not the council, they've been here on earth. We have evolved beyond physical body. Uh, I am mist in different color. And the beings that are centered in the 17th dimension are that mist of intelligence, we certainly hope, <laughs> and consciousness. Someone asked us once if we had an ego. We did not know what that was. It was a long time ago. And we looked and we do not. And that is the dimension of living in that egoless world. That is where we encounter many healers that are in human body or other planetary or other galaxies or other universes. Where does one universe end and one universe begin? It is too difficult to wrap your brain around that division. But know that every dimension carries a vibration and course, a source of that vibrational energy. In the 13th dimension, the beings are rounded with no hands or feet. In the 52nd and the 88th dimension, that is where many healing practitioners draw their healing energy from. They may not even know it. In the 17th dimension, there are many beings that are coming into that dimension to learn to grow. That is where we encountered our vessel, Marilyn. To learn to grow, to be, to experience life without limits. Does that help? Thank you. Thank you. That is the first time in 18 years someone asked about what the 17th dimension looks like. Thank you. Can you share anything about the 22nd dimension? The 22nd dimension. The 22nd dimension that we know of is that dimension of duality. That is the dimension where there is both energies. And those both energies are building, like the number, the 22nd, 22, master builder. That dimensional realm is stacking on top of each other to build into um, almost a cataclysmic, um, not an explosion, but it is building upon itself to shift the human or galactic being into more of their light body instead of their physical body. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? So in the 22nd, when the world moves to the 22nd dimension, it may be, you know, the beings from, what is that movie, Cocoon? <laughs> where they were just their light beings? That is possibly where the director or the creator visited to create those beings. Does that answer your question? But there's a question up here. Let's just get... Mm. Yes. You're also very polite to wait for the microphone. And dearest Ray is getting his exercise tonight. You've got 10,000 steps on your Fitbit, eh? <laughs> I hope I can ask this question in, in the correct way. I was in a, a, um, a car accident in 2013. And, and among many things, I suffered a very serious head trauma and it took approximately four years of rehab to get back to where I was almost 100% and during that time lots of things were happening but I noticed that I was not who I used to be but I could I didn't really understand what was going on because so many people were working with me at that time and then now that I have, I, I do feel like I've had a walk-in mm -hmm. and 
when I when people talk to me as though they're talking to the person that used to be here, I get very bored. I, I don't really. I'm kind of exhausted with them talking about something that I don't really want. I'm not no longer interested in, and it's almost. But I don't want to say. Like, I'm not that person anymore because I don't know what they'll think. And, um, uh, so what is your question? So my question How do you is, talk to your friends and say, you know, I really don't want to talk to you anymore, you're really boring. <laughs> you see, take a deep breath, dearest. Yes, you are walking. So what that means is Sometimes you do get to leave your friends behind and develop new friends. Sometimes you get to leave some of your loved ones behind. You can love them where they are. Take a deep breath, dearest. But know that, that you get the opportunity to realize... Now, there are some who define it this way. We have a difficult time with it because they say that a walk-in is an advanced soul. But if it's an advanced soul, then there must be an unadvanced soul. And that makes that better and worse and all that ego game. But in actuality, as a walk-in, you have lived on many other planets. So the mundane has no draw for you. How many of you have difficult time talking about regular things? See, you're not alone. And most of them are not walk-ins. But understand that sometimes you do get to love your friends and move beyond them. Well, I'm finding that the, the person that I used to be I was very extroverted. <laughs> I feel as though I'm still extroverted, but because of the walk-in, I've become more reclusive. That it's just so exhausting to go out because people still recognize me as who I used to be, and so I just, I, I just, I'm just so different. Yes, and when. Many times, dearest, many times your belief of what others expect of you has nothing to do with what others expect of you. It is your programming. And sometimes you can say, you know, it just doesn't resonate with me any longer. Now, most of the time they don't even know what that means. So, they leave you alone. <laughs> and sometimes you just get to say, I feel different. I feel like I've turned a corner on my life. And I'm choosing different things. And so, no, I don't want to go do that or feel that or experience that. And you are the one that gets to set your boundaries. You are not the same person. Period. Now, as a walk-in, which is a soul exchange, not a composite, you get to, know, get to know who you are now. So go into meditation. Be alone. Be with other people of like mind. You have friends here, yes? No. What is your name? My name I go by Holly. Holly? Is that your name? It wasn't my birth name, no. What is your name, Pat? Mine is yeah. Marlene. Marlene, this is Holly. Holly, this is Marlene. What is your name? Therese. Therese, this is Holly. Holly, this is Therese. What is your name? Nancy. Yeah? Nancy, Nancy Holly. <laughs> Pat? Pat? Pat Holly. Dina. Dina. Holly. So understand, it is time for you to find your people. At our convergence, we have people that they've lost their tribe. 
They started as walk-ins, most of them. They've lost their pod, they've lost their people. They may be married to somebody that they don't even recognize. Yes? I don't recognize my children. Exactly. I'm not sure that's because that's, uh, it's, it's because of the walk-in now. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be both. So understand that there are places for you to go with people just exactly like you. And it is time for you to open to your soul and integrate the walk-in with the walk-out. You have to complete the contracts of the walk-out. You know that, yes? You come in with contracts, agreements, you have to complete that circuit. But the walk-in is the one that is here to change the world. So take that inside. So is it normal with a walk-in, for example, when someone calls me by my birth name, I don't even know who they're talking to? Yes. And it takes me like 1001, 1002, 1003, for them for me to realize. And then, oh, it's me they're talking to. Oh, yeah. And yes, I, that I is very common. That say no, I'm, and then I have to stop. Yeah, you have to change your name legally to your new name, yes? Yes. If you do not, then the universe does not know who it's manifesting for. So if you are, if you have a soul name, and you are supposed to go by that soul name, like Holly, which is beautiful, uh, you do have to change it legally. You can't just say, I'm going to go by Holly, but on your, your um, driver's license or your passport, it says something else. Because then the universe says, are we talking about Holly or this other person? And that can be difficult for the family. Yet they will understand. They will understand. Do you know why they will understand? Because they love you. They don't know who you are right now. <laughs> but they will love you just because you're so lovable. And they will attempt to understand. So stay the course. You are doing tremendous work. And we will help any way we can. Yes. We have a question. All the way, there's the, oh, the Fitbit steps here. <laughs> this is the one that's closest here. There you go. Thank you. I have a friend that is in the process of dying. How can I assist her? <laughs> hold the light, hold the space. Know that that transition can be beautiful. And allow the song to come through you. You're a singer. Yes? Only to myself. And to your friend. So sing with her. Does that help? And right behind you. A man. Yes. <laughs> Love that. Thank you. <laughs> you can stay standing. Thank you. I stumbled into here some ten years ago and I'm fixated on the number seven. I don't know if this is a numerology question or a dimension question. But I'm interested in the reflections on this facility because I came here quite some years ago for one of these psychotic meetings, uh, psychic meetings. <laughs> and I've learned a lot here, and I think the building was built for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was 50 or 70 years ago that it was open. And if you go into the larger hall, the architects spent great effort to manifest the number seven mm -hmm. representations of what I believe are the seven chakras. And there are architectural ornaments where 21. And those are what, by seven, but the 21 that you mentioned earlier tonight. And the address of this joint is 707 West 47. So I was just interested in your feedback on the facility where we gather regularly, and I happen to have this as my spiritual worship place, but I'm interested in your thoughts on, I guess, the edifice, the place where we gather here to do this work. Well, 707 is a 14 which is a five, which is change. The seven, we love numerology according to Adirondack. 
takes that energy of the shape of the number in English and what we are discovering in other languages as well. It is the most spiritual of all the numbers. It is asymmetrical, so it should not even be able to stand because there's no balance to it. And yet it does. It is looking forward into new dimensional realms and into the future. It has no foundation, and yet it still stands with carriage, with love, with intention to know that the future is coming about now. And you are building your own foundation, which may be invisible, but it will still grow. Because that seven, as it is looking forward, is expanding. Of course, there's always the seven chakras and the seven-year cycle and all those sevens that come up in the sacred geometry of life. But we see that seven as the highest vibration of spiritual learning, teaching and receiving, as it is balanced perfectly. We see that it is also looking backwards. This is in English, you understand, because that is also universal in those numbers. You know, you may not, in, no matter what language, they still know how to write the letters, the numbers in English. They have that backwards where the seven comes in, right? And that means it can see in both directions, forwards and backwards. Does that help, dearest? Very much so, thanks. You are most welcome. Let us, who has not asked a question? You, right here. Then we're going to wind it up. Yes? I was just going to add something to what he said. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but um, 707 West 47, when you add 7, 7, and 4, and 7 mm -hmm. equals 25, when you add 2 and 5 equals 7. It's a 7, yes. Yes, and with that energy of the 7, and activating that energy of the 7, and moving in that capacity, you acknowledge all that you are, all that you have been, and in that seven year cycle, how long has this facility been here? 70 years. 70 years. Now it is our belief that the zero is the energy of source. All things. So it includes the source in that 707, adding up to the 7. So it is looking forwards, it is looking backwards. It is acknowledging the fact that the foundation may need attention. Because a facility like this is only as good as its people, yes? And we'd say if you come here, its people must be pretty darn good. So these are the selenite swords of light. This is a Lemurian crystal on the end. This is Merkaba of Rose Quartz, love. They are activators. They follow the intention of the user and the receiver. They activate whatever you need to have activated, whatever you choose to have activated in your life. Yes? And they deactivate whatever you choose to have deactivated in your life. Whether it points at you directly or not, you are still included in that energy. We discovered when we were in Egypt, we have done the Selenite Swords of Light for since 2012. And many, many, we have many on the council. You may have been aware that a few visitors have come in. That it's not necessarily all at Rwanda. In Egypt, we discovered. Is the sword the strongest? Mm. Strongest as what? It is an energy, a sword of light that is a weapon of the future. 
It cannot possibly hurt anyone. And we have discovered that it was in Egypt, Sekhmet, who used the swords of light. Sekhmet, the goddess of destruction and the goddess of creation. It was Sekhmet who seeded from the Pleiades that part of the world. And when I was so Marilyn was there with 111 people and Cryon, and they got to have a private audience with a statue that had been there for maybe 20,000 years in a tiny room where you could only spend 10 seconds in there. The statue breathed and moved. So it is your intention. What are you letting go of or integrating? And what are you creating? Is it alright if we activate that? If not, then close your eyes. <laughs> and you can close your eyes anyway. <laughs> or you can leave them open. Take a deep breath.
dearest beings of light, we love you so much. You are here on this Friday that some believe is some special day. Remember what you do for yourself, dearest beloved, you do for all others. What you are for yourself, you are for all others. So we implore you, I implore you, to remember the love that you are, to be that love, to honor that existence. For you see, I came all this way back here. You know what happened last time? I'm just, I knew the energy of love. Yes. As are you. The energy of love in your heart as that rebirth. I ask you, dearest, to feel that every day. To be with it, to honor it. As you honor you. For with that, with that intention, this world will change. And as it changes, you are indeed the ones that we have been waiting for. You are the difference in this world. And some get the opportunity to gather groups together. For that I am so grateful. For as you do, your energy field bumps into her energy field. And your energy field bumps into his energy field. And that is how the change happens. Because it is about changing your perspective. Even though you try not to turn to the back of the room. Because <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Trust who you are. Trust that you are given a gift. You've got to be here at this moment in time. You have been at pinnacle changes on this planet before. What are you doing about it this time? Living your dream and your vision, no matter where you are. Yes? We love you deeply. The alarm must be going off, the microwave is done. <laughs> We honor you <coughs> and we bid you namaste. <laughs> Back. <laughs> um, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you again for coming out this evening. And uh, remember that this Friday is our April program right here in the church. Thank you. We've got some products to sell up on the front. As Bill mentioned, uh, Marilyn has some items up here for sale. So if you want to come and peruse and look, please come up. And uh, thank you again for coming. Have a good evening. Thank you.